Good luck. All right, welcome to week 97 of the Shogi Teaching Ladder. So the idea is that each week we get to play against a higher rated and a lower rated opponent. And these are friendly games, and we comment the games afterward. So we're always looking to try new ideas. Or at least I am. Uh, new ideas are fun to try. My opponent is playing uh, some central rook strategy here. Um, so if I'm looking to do something I've not done before, let's see, how can I do that? Generally, I don't play the static rook opening. But, um, you know, if my opponent is playing a particular way, I ought to adapt to whatever it is that they are playing. Hmm. So this puts pressure on this side of the board immediately. Uh, we saw a discussion yesterday about this early gold move on other people's live streams. How this is actually a quite popular move. Um, it's not bad. Um, and this allows uh, Senta here to keep this silver and bishop connected. That way if I trade bishops, uh, they don't have to worry about uh, retreating a piece or moving a piece into the corner that's too hard to move out of the corner. Um, let's play our king to the left side of the board as I try to figure out the remainder of my strategy. Um, since they're clearly attacking down the center, I know that however I develop will be different somehow than walking straight into what they're doing. Further, I don't need to build the fortress. There's a f popular shape called Yagara, Y-A-G-U-R-A, -A, but I don't need to do that here. Let's see if we can discourage them from tucking their king into the corner. Or if they're fully committed to tucking the king into the corner, we'll need to change what we're doing. They're not committed to that. They're willing to fight on this side of the board. Um, so I should be careful about how close I move my king to the corner. But this is still a reasonable move, I think. This gets out of the way of a bishop diagonal. Hmm. Interesting. So their king is closer to the corner than my king can reasonably get. Um, I still don't know where my bishop and silver will go, but I do need to start making plans. Uh, one popular plan is to advance the silver to perform a break on this side of the board. Um, so it seems like a reasonable plan to follow. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's a popular shape to build. Um... If I push this pawn, then later this diagonal becomes weak. If I don't push this pawn, this knight cannot advance ever. Welcome. Um, so... Yeah, let's play it this way. Here. Uh, just a simple, straightforward advance. Um, interesting. I should be familiar with this more so than I am. What strikes me as most interesting about this is two things. One, my silver can't defend this point. And two, if I bring up this gold, eventually the gold becomes a target. 
but this shape has been produced many times before. I don't see any reason to avoid this shape here, uh, the boat castle. Um, hmm. All right. So my silver can approach on the left or on the right. Likewise, yeah, they their approach is quite obvious. And it looks sensible enough. If I push this pawn, I could bring the knight out to hit... Well, it's not going anywhere. If I bring the silver out, yeah, it's floating, but it's fine. Um... Yeah, no, it's fine. I don't see any problem with this. Currently, they cannot place a pawn on my rook file, so if we exchange and I kick the rook, they can't just drop a pawn in front of my rook and use this as a point to invade right now. So, hmm. Let me just check my overlay and make sure it's good. Yeah, the overlay looks fine. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to balance discouraging this pawn advance, which might be difficult to do, with it, like, preserving my own attacking idea of pushing this pawn, bringing my silver in, and striking at a point that only one general is capable of defending. It's quite possible... They might have needed something else to defend this than what they're currently doing. Because I can push the pawn and then break in, right? Like, 99 games out of 100, I would play my rook to the left and my king to the right, so I'm not used to seeing the board flipped like this. But I think I have a point here. I think I've seen other players successfully pull off this attack. Pawn up. Pawn takes, silver takes, and the silver is threatening to promote. And because this bishop is in the way, they can't drop a pawn where the bishop is to prevent the silver from promoting here. If I push, they could hit my silver, but then I hit the bishop and the gold. So this looks sound to me. I'm too curious. Let's find out. seems difficult for them to stop my attack at this point. Um, if they could stop my attack, I might have had to like bring the rook up to defend across this rank, but I think my attack is broken through. Uh, that said, their castle here, this one, well, let me think. Yeah, normally I would move my gold general over here, and this would be Mino Castle. Here, this is just half Mino. In uh, Shogi Harbor's book lecture discussion, um, uh, she would also refer to this as the clip shape, where this gold and silver mutually defend each other. All right, so there is this pressure against uh, my castle. If I completely ignore this, they promote, and then they take my gold and take my other gold and check maybe. So I probably want to take back before something terrible happens. Oh, you remember my point earlier about the how they can't drop a pawn in front of my rook? <laughs> you remember that point. Um, well, I guess right now they don't have time to drop a pawn in front of my rook. But there could... Well, they might have time, actually. I should have read this out. The other thing with that's time-concerning is, like, I'm just out of shape practicing this game. But, um, yeah, the actual clock next to the game board caught my attention. Um, so I can win a pawn here. Then they drop another pawn and threaten to promote it. I take the rook, they take my rook. That gives me a rook in hand to attack with. But 
Oh, and I could drop the rook to hit this pawn from behind, while also supporting my original attacking idea. Shogi tactics are detailed. Um, if I move my rook away right now, well, then they can stop my attack. Because this bishop can run away if it needs to from a pawn drop. So, yeah, if I'm going to attack, it's going to be like this. I should have been more careful. Not that there was anything necessarily I could have done better, but there's a possibility that I might have missed something critical here. That instead of having to go into this rook exchange variation, perhaps there was another way. And if there was another way, it would have been safer. And if there was such a possibility, then, you know, I should have considered it, right? I suspect that this was probably the best I can do. After all, I'm just playing as second player Gota here. Um, the only thing that perhaps I might have changed is not move this gold general toward the center. But then this point would not have been defended. So this is fine. Alright, so I can promote my silver. This promoted silver attacks a gold and a bishop. If I drop a pawn in front of my silver, the pawn can't go anywhere because this bishop retreats and the gold cuts it off. So, yeah, if I promote, we do some exchanging. My rook is extremely active, and I am quite happy. So, and they don't seem to have any decisive fork that I see anyway. All right, so let's promote my rook. My promoted rook strikes both at the bishop and the square next to the bishop. From the square next to the bishop, it attacks more things. So, yeah, they they take this stance where right now neither of these pieces can move anywhere. Um, but my rook can't move anywhere either. So if they drop a pawn and then they drop a silver somewhere, my rook is trapped. So i got to be careful. This could be a long game. Yeah, getting an early advantage doesn't mean that you just win the game. Um, I could have considered back here but I didn't see any advantage to being so close to their shape. In fact, like they could immediately strike at my rook if I did something like that. All right. Um, now I've already promoted the rook. I don't need to promote it twice. Each piece just promotes once in this game. Uh, if I drop a pawn, they have two pieces protecting the square in front of the pawn. If I drop it back here, though, and threaten to promote it, that's a different matter. Um, hmm. To me, this seems quite reasonable. Like, I did find, try to find a place to put my gold with profit, but couldn't find any such place. Um. <laughs> oh, note that if I do take this pawn later with my dragon, they can discover a check and bad things happen. So... Yeah, it's not obvious where best square for the rook is. Attacking the king would be reasonable. Or could be reasonable. Um, 
If I go back one, they drop something immediately in front of my rook. If I go back two, the thing that concerned me was they drop a pawn and then drop a silver, but, like, that's not so concerning. It's annoying, sure, uh, but concerning, not so much. So I think this is quite reasonable, despite allowing a pawn drop and a silver drop. They, there's not a continuation to that. They could also try a silver drop and a pawn drop, but again, they'd need a continuation. Ah, this defends the weak point. I missed that. Still, I mean, I can hit the knight. So, yeah, I don't heavily profit, but I'm steadily profiting from this. All right. That does strike at my weakest point with two pieces. Um, well, what now? I've not activated my bishop, and that's something I've really should have done by now. But what can we? What can be done? It's too late. Um, um, Okay, we'll make an attempt to defend this weakness. Note that, like, they, yes, they can drop a pawn right next to my castle, and, like, pawn exchanges can happen. Um, but some opponents in this teaching ladder have a tendency to attack strongly, or attack quickly. Those aren't always the same thing. Attacking quickly sometimes means it's difficult to muster enough forces for your tech to break through. Now, if I were to drop the gold way out here, it would not be well positioned to defend my king in the future. Nor would it be in position to checkmate the opposing king. Um... But yeah, one thing I should have considered... Well, if I bring the bishop out, they could push a pawn, and like I don't profit from that. I could drop the gold here at that point. Pawn takes, bishop takes, promotes. But like the more pieces I exchange, the weaker my castle becomes. So there's not an obvious path to profit other than like bring the token back. Token takes pawn, token takes pawn, etc. Eventually, they might sack the bishop, and, you know, we're still set there. Okay, this hits this point twice. And denies my rook entry to their position. Um, This raises questions, though, right? Like, if I just hit the knight, what are they going to do about it? Knight takes, knight takes, silver takes, dragon takes, right? I don't see what else to try here. If this were just a normal rook, it would not be able to take diagonally, but, you know. They've got two attacking, I've got two defending. They could support this attack with another pawn, but I'm not sure that would be enough either. 
I could try to bring the bishop to support this attack, but that's why I just advanced this pawn. One, because the pawn blocks this diagonal where it stands. And two, if they did advance the bishop, I could drop a gold, and the gold would attack the bishop and the knight. And they'd probably move the bishop, and i just take the knight. Or I could fork the king, rook and gold, this, or bishop this way. So, yeah, it's... I think we've found this balance of power here. Yeah, they take back. This attacks my dragon, so I don't have time to do this fork just yet. So we exchange one piece and a pawn for two pieces. So now we've got three pieces and one pawn in hand. Um, they're trying to scare me. But my dragon is behind a pawn here. I can just take this free knight. Should I take it? Probably. Yeah, no, there's no attack here. In, in warfare games, you like to have two fronts to simultaneously attack on. Um... It's hard to get two fronts to simultaneously attack on, but it's what you want to do. Here, the, the one front would be this long diagonal. Um, I'm not sure what the other front would be here, since I have this nice wall of pieces blocking attacks from this side. Arguably, the head of the castle could be another target, but my opponent's pieces have depleted. And that means it's going to be my turn to attack next. <laughs> okay, that's sensible. Um, does it work? Maybe. But, um... Alright, so their rook is a weak... It's floating in space. I, you can consider the square where their rook stands to be a weakness. So, before we exchange, uh, let's attack the rook, but also we are attacking toward the castle here. If we had a bishop on this diagonal, we'd be able to do the same tactic that our opponent just did to us. Um, but note also, like, if we exchange pawns here, the rook would be attacking this pawn and this pawn. Well, now there's a knight in the way. Now also the knight is blocking this diagonal. So, um, also this rook is protecting this pawn, so now I'm threatening to take the pawn and take the silver. But the silver is fairly nimble. I'm sure it would escape my attack, but, you know, we give my opponent things to think about. Um, oh, I guess I hadn't considered this, but if the rook simply moves, I could drop a bishop that forks the rook and silver. I was fully expecting the rook to drop back, but there might be problems with that too. Um, if somehow I can ensnare the rook. I don't have a lance in hand just yet. But if... well, no, I can't. This isn't supported by my rook, so... It would have been cool if this token advanced silver runs and I just take the lance, and then I'd be able to threaten to trap the rook. But, you know, king's over here. I should focus on the king. It's not super clear how to do that, how to actually focus on the king here. Um, no, I did just make a weakness. They can actually now bring this pawn forward twice, and then on a third move, take my knight. So if I do absolutely nothing, they can just push this pawn three times. Sure, they have to move their rook first, because I am doing something here, but... Yeah, I introduced a weakness. No move is perfect. Um... But yeah, this clip shape is quite resilient to attacks within its radius. It's not resilient to attacks just outside its radius here. Okay, so now I could drop a bishop 
and that bishop would attack the rook and the lance. Rook and the lance. Um, is that the best square for my bishop? Yes, because it's the only square where my bishop promotes. Uh, but no, they would oppose my bishop with their bishop. Mm. It's not obvious. There's nothing obvious going on here. I could attack the rook again, but why? Well, no. It's exactly what I'm doing with this bishop drop, is hitting the rook. And they can't block it easily, either. Um, I don't know. Actually, they can block it easily. We have 60 seconds for every move. I see another weakness. Yeah, we're going to do something here. This didn't occur to me last turn, but now it occurs to me. Hey, this square is not defended by both generals. So if I really wanted to collapse this castle, I could attack it from this direction. A rook exchange. Interesting. I don't think it's interesting enough. Maybe it is. Hmm. All right, I accept. You've convinced me. I want to activate my rook. Exchanging rooks is not contrary to that goal. Um... Okay, we have one obvious attack here, which is just immediately strike the king. We don't have a gold general in hand anymore, but this is a powerful move and prevents the opponent from doing the same thing. <laughs> Actually, they couldn't drop the bishop anywhere near this anyway. Um, so I'm talking out my butt. Oops. But, you know, it's still a good move. Um, it's hard to oppose is the other thing. And I didn't want to have to explain that, but, like, here, they don't have a silver in hand. They don't have a knight in hand. A pawn cannot be dropped in front of another pawn. So it's difficult for them to put up a strong opposition against this bishop. So I get this for a free move. Uh, so now they're attacking my castle, and I'd anticipated this. Silver takes as normal. Um, knight drop. King moves somewhere. I'm not convinced that I have mate. Knight advance. King moves. I've got a silver in hand. I'm still not convinced that I have checkmate. Bringing this up would give me more confidence here. So we're going to do the slightly questionable thing. Instead of attacking, spend one move to defend. They do have an attack on my back row, don't they? Um, hmm. 
so when I said I had an obvious attacking idea, I didn't think enough about defense. Fortunately, I'm still set here. I have an extremely hard wall of generals, and now a, a bottom pawn that defend this. Um, so, yes, I'm giving them my lance. Uh, or I'm alternatively giving them my token. And that was the cost of exchanging the rooks, by the way. Um, but they can't drop a rook against my rook, so my rook drop is going to accompany my silver or bishop drop. And I guess they have this lance drop against it now. So my rook drop is not effective. I need to find a different way in. Hmm. If I bring this up immediately. Hmm. Yeah, my the fact that I'm playing scared like this is causing me problems. <sighs> yeah, if, instead of taking this pawn, if I just dropped a rook immediately, this could have forced some exchanges. Or no, they could have dropped a pawn. Never mind. Um, yeah, my rook drop is not decisive, so it was mistaken of me to exchange rooks. I can't defend my idea. Um, hmm. I'm not impressed by my attacking skill. Yeah, this is stupid. Um, so they can drop a lance, and I could drop a knight. Or a silver. The thing that's appealing about the knight drop is it would break this castle from its base. I thought about this knight drop here. I thought knight takes was a strong enough threat. But then I chickened out and realized, you know, if I'm going to use my rook, I have to put it on the board. So we're putting the rook on the board. Um, my knight blocks my bishop, so in the future I should move my knight instead of dropping another knight. Oh, and then if the king tries to escape, I can bring the bishop back. They could push this. I could drop a silver. Um, change up that move order a bit. Uh, bishop back. No. Yeah, if I drop the silver prematurely, that's dumb. Um, but there's not yet a mate there. I still need more. My castle is strong enough. I can afford some... Slow moves here. Whoa! Whoa. That's adventurous. Um, either they've missed my attack, or, like, we're not on the same page here. Um... No, defense against my bishop retreat idea. Okay, so this almost compels me to do something. Not quite. This is too interesting. 
I don't see a conclusion to my attack here, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, but also I can just take this silver if they take my knight. But also I can threaten their lance and take it. Also I could use this other lance if their king moves, but like the knight and bishop are in such good coordination here that I shouldn't move the bishop just yet. Um, yeah, taking this silver looks sanest. I check, the king moves forward. Oh, then I take. Or... Yeah. Hmm. Thirty seconds. Hmm. Forty seconds. I'm too curious. Forty seconds. I think this is satisfactory. I don't see a checkmate yet. Silver. King, yeah, I don't see a checkmate yet, but if I had a gold general, and I know how to get a gold general, I think I'm fine. Uh, oh. Huh. Yeah, I could use one of these. Let's take it. And this gives them one tempo to do what they want um, before I drop the gold general here, and that's checkmate. Thanks for the game. Good game. Yeah, this is invigorating, because, uh, yeah, we both tried new things this game. Um, and that's the excitement of the ladder, is that you get to try things. Uh, yeah. Uh, now we commence uh, the post-game analysis, you know, at their convenience. I know we were just entering time pressure there. They might be a bit excited, um, but um, yeah, after the game completes, then we have the opportunity to do post-game analysis on it, see what thoughts we had and such. Um, so yeah, I'll offer, uh, do you want to do post-game analysis from the top? Um, and yeah, nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, falls to me to guide the analysis. Okay, that's fair. Uh, yeah, this is cool stuff. I like this work advance idea. Um, let's see, so what more could there be here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, yeah, I'm... By all means, we're welcome to do analysis in 81 Dojo. Uh, they do know that I do a live stream, but it's probably easier for most opponents to do analysis right in the same interface than have to switch between two windows. So I think by default we use this uh, 81 Dojo for analysis. Um, mm. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't figure out how best to use my bishop. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, this is all pretty reasonable, I think. Um, uh, I 
sometimes uh, delayed uh, this gold move. I don't know whether it's reasonable or not. I meant to put a semicolon instead of a comma. Oh well, what do you do? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've been hit by this um, attack before. Um, it might be too late here already. Hmm. Ah! I wonder if, like, this attack can't be stopped here. Um, so, and if it can't be stopped, then what can be done? Um, yeah. Oh, wait, I wonder. What about this? Hmm. Hmm. I didn't think enough about this one. Yeah, so this is kind of cool. Um, how does this work? So there has to be this exchange. And then this drop. Um, hmm. Yeah, it beats me. Okay. Yeah, that seems sensible here. Well, this looks kind of fun, doesn't it? So my opponent has threats against my castle. I guess we do address it this way now. I could drop a pawn against the rook, but I don't need to. Um, this seems adequate. I don't know who stands better here. So, yeah, well, if I'm threatening this pawn exchange, oh, yeah, their bishop can't escape my attack, can't it? But, um, I might still stand, no, uh, this is tricky, um, maybe now I need to kick their rook? So, maybe this is okay? The idea is they can't drop a pawn to force my rook up and then drop another pawn to force a rook exchange or to encourage one. Um, so yeah, once the rook moves, I can take this pawn and then advance my silver and start exchanging stuff on my terms, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got this regardless. Um... Yeah, like to me, this seems like a way for me to advance, and I don't see a way to stop it. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, even though this idea of retreating the bishop sometimes works here, it's just not quite enough. It's a lot of moves. Um, but yeah, apparently this doesn't quite do it. Um, so, uh, whoops, oh. Yeah, you need to defend this point. Uh, so, uh, how would you do this? 
I mean, one idea could be like this or this. Uh... Oh! Um... So, yeah, this, uh, over here, um, so this and this could be delayed slightly. Um, yeah. I guess um, some of that could be slightly delayed. Um, yeah. So, like, I've done this here. Um, I've just played my king up and over, but, um, yeah, if I had some idea what their attacking shape was like, I would have built my castle a bit more. In, this early in the game, but since I don't really know how they intend to attack, um, I've kind of uh, just deferred on what castle do I want to build. Um, there, yeah, I could build several here, even though I'm not fully familiar with all this because I don't always play this way. I normally put my rook on the left, king on the right. But here there's just lots of options, but here I'm just going for a quick attack. Um, I did play this gold general up, and like I said, uh, not sure if I needed to do that. But yeah, I built Boat Castle, which took three turns. They built this, which took one, two, one king move, two move, three king moves, and one silver move. So it took them four turns to build that. And then they played... Uh, the Rook here, and the Silver, and two Pawn moves. So they've played four attacking moves. I've played one, two Pawn moves, one, two, three, four Silver moves. Wow. I've played six attacking moves. Yeah. So yeah, I've played a lot of games on Shogi Wars and on 81 Dojo where I'd play this central fall rook strategy. And yeah, building a complete castle sometimes isn't the greatest idea. Um, depends what else you're doing. Yeah, it's it's not like third fall rook or uh, some other openings where you can play a system every time. There's a fair deal of variety in the way you can play this attack and how you defend it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's possible that we're working a better structure to protect the bishop or just waiting for the opponent to develop its attack. Um, hmm. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We've got a resident expert um, about uh, central file strategy.
So wouldn't hurt to pay her heed about uh, what's the best way to, you know, play Central Farrook. Um, it's I don't know. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of ways to play it, I think. Whether or not you offer a bishop exchange, which castle you choose to build, where your rook ends up, how you move all the rest of your pieces and pawns, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, like, yeah, it's really weird because this hole in the position is right next to the castle. So, you have to make sure you pick the right castle. And how do you pick the right one? <laughs> well, you delay it. <laughs> um... um... this hole. Um, so if you push this up, this becomes another hole. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Admittedly, uh, I don't know. I'm actually confused about, like, this bishop's just sitting here. Yeah. Cool. Um... But yeah, that's our little theory about this. So then I break in. <laughs> so yeah, this opens this line. Uh, yeah, they need this. So um, it makes sense. Um, It's a hard position. Um, I'm not really sure. So I'm the one guiding the analysis. I don't know what the questions are, but I also don't know what the answers are. So that's kind of a problem when the winner guides the analysis, is that sometimes um, it's hard to get the right questions. Well... Um... <laughs> Did wonder about this, couldn't quite figure it out. Um, Cause like, I don't have anywhere good to drop a rook if I do get one. 
No, I'm sorry. I do have a good place to drop the rook. It's just... Hmm. Well... Uh, uh, yeah, my, uh, the pawn drop I did give him hope. Uh, this one? Further, okay. Uh, let's see. We have this. I ran back. Oh, this here. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Like. What the hell am I doing over here? I'm taking the slow path forward. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a very good point. So I had been thinking about this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I could just like drop all the way back here and you know these guys are just floating out there um, uh, so yeah what I ended up doing was not super smart um, uh, it gives them hope and if your goal is to crush hope then um, yeah, the, this is not in alignment with that objective. Oh, this pawn drop. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, I think they saw this though, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's why the knight, um, and, um, yeah, knight 6-5 was not necessary here. Yeah, so something like this here, maybe. Um, <laughs> would I have taken straight away? Probably. Should I have taken straight away? Probably not. I don't know. Um. Yeah, then I have to, like, drop back here. Or I don't have to, but it behooves me to drop back here. And just watch their attack run out. Um, and does my attack not run out? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, actually, no, I can trap this. Oh, sorry, I can give them the hat here, too. Yeah. That's an interesting thought. So if the pawn leads the attack, I'm not sure the pawn leading is convincing. Oh, right, yeah. So, okay, this is another way to approach. Actually, this is the way the game played out, isn't it? Yeah. I think this is as good as anything. I think it's just an immensely difficult position once I've got this token. Um, and dragon. It's, uh, yeah, this is, well, actually, yeah, maybe they're knight advance two for one deal. Uh, yeah, 
so it's difficult. I mean, yeah, I don't know that I could have recovered the position any better than they did here. Um, yeah. And the two for one exchange helps me out because yeah, I get two pieces in hand, which means they have twice as many things to worry about defending, um, as they did before this exchange. So, um, I could see why they might consider the pawn drop and the silver in front, but then I think the dragon retreats and I pawn drop and trap the silver too. It's just a very, very rough position. Um, Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, strangely, I had some difficulty uh, checkmating. So, you know, it's not necessarily easy, even with the bishop and knight. Um, well, we got there. Um, yeah, this exchange they did, uh, uh, yeah, there were some errors in the way I played this attack, but it was good enough to seal the win here. Um, yeah, I've seen... <laughs> The players uh, use Rook takes gold against me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, so there's variations like this. Um, I wonder. Actually, perhaps do I still have this here? Does this work? I think so. A gold general is just a fantastic attacking piece. Um, so... Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it took me a while to recognize that it, I had some... <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Let's see. Yep, yep, yep. The gold was just the right piece for this occasion. So, um, yeah. We made good use of it. There were probably some errors in my attack that probably I could have attacked one move faster somehow. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if I've missed uh, ideas. Although, uh, I do wonder if maybe earlier uh, So yeah, when I did this Rook exchange here, that might have been good for him. Because up to that point, he didn't really have much of an attack, and then I just gave him one. Um, perhaps I could have retreated instead, and, you know, their Rook wouldn't have been able to promote anyway. But I like attacking with my Rook. Um, but no, probably there were cleaner ways for me to have completed this. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess, um, hmm. It's kind of hard to believe that within the last 20 moves they didn't have any questions, but, um. Oh. The... 
but yeah, after I drop this pawn, uh, they could drop pawns here. But yeah, after this dropped, uh, but yeah, it, uh, it's not easy. But yeah, if you could just draw the generals away from this, then somehow break it up. Yeah, that might be an idea. But here, yeah, the rook is just floating about, and rather than take a silver, which I don't need, I took a gold general, which I did need, and it was exactly the right piece to checkmate the king here. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to ask about. I am curious what thoughts, ideas, suggestions, something they have here, but, uh, or about the game in general. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, are there other things that looked interesting in this game? Or other thoughts? Other than, like, clearly I don't know opening... I mean, I have some idea of how you would play this opening strategy. I have clearly some idea about how to attack the king, even though usually I've been on the receiving side of such attacks. Um, yeah, it was rough. Uh. <laughs> Uh, rook, bishop, uh, yeah, 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 cool. <laughs> so here they didn't get a chance to attack with the bishop. They were too concerned about the bishop exchange and there just wasn't an opportunity, unfortunately, for them to use the bishop without having some possibility of it being exchanged. It's difficult in a game to get everything you desire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, so sometimes, you know, part of any negotiation is that you need to be open to possibilities um, even ones that are not necessarily welcome to you. So like here, I didn't activate my bishop, and if my opponent had played a little bit differently, maybe I would have had to. Um, so, let me think. Supposing we had gone this way, because I've had to do this before, uh, and the reason I've had to do this is because of this attack, right? So, if, supposing they had gone this way, then I would have had to approach like this, I think. Um, and there becomes a question, like, clearly there are some issues in... Well, now they have this defended, so I can't do it this way. But if I approach this way here, um, I'm willing to offer my silver to get in like that. So, like, they're needing to defend this point. Um, but a challenge with this kind of strategy is that the minute this diagonal opens, I can open the same diagonal, right? I don't know if I want to here, but, like, both of us didn't want to see a bishop exchange. Both of us kept this diagonal closed. So, consequently, this point in front of this pawn did not get defended. I was able to move multiple pieces through this point and take the point just beyond it. Uh, so another idea might have been this, probably not because of that, and you can't really defend this so effectively. But you have to, it, there's some give and take in this game. You don't always get everything you want. Uh, I guess case in point, like move one, they play central file rook. For many recent games, I've been considering like, can I play Urashino? Can I play central file rook myself when they're not playing it? Um, 
many other games I've just played third file rook against this, but um, I decided this time I was going to try something a bit different, as I usually do. And this limited the ways I could do something different. So uh, I played Static Rook. Um, it's a bad example, I guess, because a lot of people play this. And just because I don't normally play it doesn't mean it's I'm giving anything up here. Here, uh, I was trying to discourage them from playing this sort of idea. Um, but uh, And I did successfully discourage it. But whether or not this actually achieves that goal is unclear. Could they have actually just done this anyway? And I push, and they do this, and, you know, we've got this sort of thing going on. I don't know to what extent that's playable. Actually, with the gold over here, it's perhaps not playable anyway, so I didn't need to do this. So I lost a tempo trying to discourage something that shouldn't have happened in the first place. Hmm. So, yeah, I could have, rather than spending that tempo over here, um, could have moved my king once. More likely I could have played this and just gotten on with it. Saved a full tempo by not doing that. Um, but then they would have probably defended against what I'm doing. Normally, um... Or in many cases, one of these two pawns advances while the silver is advancing, and you know there are ways these weave together. But since my opponent had already committed to central foul rook, I didn't feel like pushing the pawns right next to the central foul because then these become targets and things get complicated. But maybe it still would have been fine for me to push one of those early. Uh, like I pointed out during the analysis here, this is a bit committal, but it's okay. Um, yeah, so... This, they've spent one tempo bringing the rook out, one tempo on this, uh, three king moves and a silver building this castle. And this bishop is still inactive, and my bishop's still inactive. I can't really claim any moral high ground there. And yeah, I waste a move on, well, in this case, against central far rook, we happen to know there's this possibility that they might spend three tempi. Uh, really spending two, because they get one back immediately, but they could spend two tempi forcing this beyond the tempo they've already expended. So my spending one move to defend against this threat adequately is fine. Um, yes, I attack here directly, and it's just too late at this point. There's, As far as I can see, there's no good way to defend this. Even their well-intentioned move is too late. It's unfortunate that, you know... What can you do? So, um, oh, actually, this raises an interesting point. What could they do, right? So they bring up the rook, I do my attack anyway, and they've lost a tempo. They could have brought the bishop back, which we saw makes things more complicated, but isn't necessarily better. Um, other things they could have done... Well, they could have blocked their rook, which would have been most unpleasant, particularly while my attack is swinging in full force. This would have been an alternative. Uh, I have to take, I think. And yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I think I still do this. Um, but they've saved a full tempo by not moving the rook twice. So I missed that point in the post-game analysis. That, like, hey, you played the rook up, it didn't actually stop what I was doing, and then, yeah, you did what you had to do at this point, but in hindsight, I should slow down just a little bit, but, you know, it's hard to see everything while the clock's ticking. Um, I did hint at this. Uh, I don't know how it resolves. Um... During the game, my thoughts were that this sort of thing could happen. And I was thinking this rook drop, which actually just loses the rook, but this one looks okay. And the question becomes, um, like, what's going on here? I'm not sure. Their token is scary. Uh, this might refute my entire attack. I don't know. Um... 
It's complicated in my mind. Maybe it's not so complicated to you. To me, this is a bit much. And I saw, like, I don't have a good Rook drop over here. So maybe I just bluffed my way accidentally, as I tend to do, into a good position. Again, like, it's not my intention to deceive or bluff or anything like that, but it happens. Um, hmm. If this refutes my idea, then I need to have another idea, right? My second idea was to retreat the rook here. Um, uh, this actually seems to justify... Wait. Okay, so this is why they didn't do this pawn drop. I missed this. My feeling was, like, this sequence of two pawn drops can't be crushing me, because, like, this looked more or less forced what I was doing, right? Um, I thought I had to take this pawn. And I thought I had to drop a pawn so they don't drop one in front of me. And, like, the notion that I should be able to defend my own doorstep didn't seem completely alien to me. So, whether or not this pawn drop is necessary, I don't know. But it looked reasonable. Um, but, yeah, this pawn drop, unfortunately, just loses a pawn. Um... And this retreat was okay. This pawn drop gave them some hope, he says, but I think it was reasonable. I don't think there was anything bad about it. Um, maybe there is, because I'm blocking my rook. If I'd not done that, then they'd be dropping pawns in, a, or a silver in a pawn somewhere trying to shut out my rook anyway. But then I can turn my attention toward the king somehow. Maybe, hopefully. Maybe not. This might have been an opportunity for me to bring out the bishop and something, something. I don't know. It's not easy. Or if it is, I just am not seeing it. So, like, I don't really know what's going on here. Um... And had I brought the rook up the board instead of down, then, you know, the rook is still defending this point. Um, so it would have had to go down eventually anyway, and I just didn't understand this position very well. So I thought what I did was reasonable, but this, this could have been reasonable too. Uh, what scared me out of it was this idea, and the notion that they have a lance and maybe a rook joining in to attack against my flank. So, didn't want to see that, so instead we went this way. Um, but, yeah, I think overall the way I played this was sane. Um, the silver drop doesn't actually threaten anything. And yet I reacted to it anyway. Oops. Um, yeah, no, I could have just like brought this over. There's no need for anything anxious here. Not sure why I didn't just do that. Hmm. Or a gold drop forking the knight and the silver doesn't actually improve anything. But yeah, moving this token back and starting to take things would give them something to think about. Uh, alternatively, uh, this is still on the menu. And uh, what do I think about it? Um, let's say they defend their silver this way. Oh, I don't know what I think. I'm not sure. Like, this whole time I've been fighting uh, my instinct to play the gold here and take the knight and hit the bishop, because the gold out here is useless. It's too far away from both kings. Um, 
But yeah, maybe after this exchange, then this is reasonable. I don't know. I mean, what I did was probably reasonable too. But I guess the point I'm trying to underscore is that the silver, while cutting off my rook, doesn't achieve much else. I guess cutting off the rook's a, a major achievement, so... Yeah, when they played this, I did look at this, and I saw this, and that... I saw this and I didn't like this position, but I should like it. It's a very good position, because the silver is out of play. Actually, wait, they don't need to play it this way. They have a knight advance. I missed this. Um, but then I could play here. Yeah, so I started this post-post game analysis here with the notion that you have to be willing to give and take. And yeah, here, if I'm willing to hit, let my rook be chased around, yeah, it's fuzzy what's going to happen next, but this is probably the faster way for me to attack, the cleanest way for me to attack with minimal risk. The only risks I face are that my knight and lance are forfeit, but um, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what other players or even engines would think about that position or recommend about it. But yeah, so we exchange, my opponent gives up a knight, and at this point, um, yeah, they clearly want to exchange pieces. I, I'm i not sure if this is the right way for me, for me to approach their king. It looks sane, but then I need to have a next move, and I don't have one. It would have been really nice to have a super powerful next move. Like, one thing I could consider, imagining that this was their idea, was to anticipate the idea and completely shut it down. But I was concerned about this. Um, should I have been concerned about it? Maybe. Um, because, yeah, my rook, my gold generals, like, I've got a chain that's defensive in one direction and doesn't do much in the other direction. Actually, this is kind of a fun shape, isn't it? But it's a bit more prone to a pawn drop. But my dragon defends uh, indirectly anyway, so I could, like, get away with this. Or possibly even something like that. Like, this is a rook, not a dragon. This is a dragon, so, like, it's very difficult for them to advance and attack me. Um, so, yeah, seeing all the things that were in play here, I should have... I mean, this is an interesting idea. Pawn takes pawn is probably my sanest idea I can do here. Uh, instead, I went on this wild escapades, imagining that I'm attacking this, and did a gold drop, and the gold drop is too heavy. There's got to be some reasonable way other than gold drop forward. Rook takes is very light. Makes use of my least useful piece at the moment. Pawn takes pawn is perhaps just as light. But if I do this, they offer this exchange, and I have to be prepared to meet it somehow. Even if meeting it means something like this. Which, maybe that's of my liking, maybe it's not. Uh, one fun thing is that this introduces a tactic, so... Or my knight could even go here, I don't know. Um, but yeah. There become tactics if the rook dances in this manner. Um, well, no, that's not the only tactic at play here. So if I hit the rook, they can hit my pieces back. Um, and it's... well, they can't do that, can they? In this case, this gold, although it's much too heavy, um, it's got a point. And that point is that they don't have any pieces left. Uh, so yeah, they, they'd they have to take back here. And I have some attacking ideas like this. Um, like this, like this. There's a lot of potential here. Despite my rook being completely out of it, it's fine. At this point, yeah, there's 
So yeah, this pawn exchange, um, this pawn exchange, I think would more or less compel them to do this. After which uh, I get a tempo, or rather, I regain my tempo um, if I do that, and I don't have to. If I don't do that, I do get a free tempo. But what do I do with that? I don't know. A lot of things. <laughs> Tempi are valuable. Um, so, yeah. Again, this tries to become active. But I did well, just didn't like this. But maybe there's more to it than what I see. Um... So, yeah, instead of this exchange, I mean, the exchange's purpose is to prevent them from doing the same exchange. Um, so this prevents this rook exchange idea. Anyway, now I'm going to kick myself for allowing this, and, you know, I was quite happy to exchange rooks, and it worked out in the game, but it gave them way more attacking opportunities than I expected. And maybe that's because I defended incorrectly? Oh, uh, interesting. I don't think silver takes is wrong. But since silver takes is not wrong, then yeah, this is a fork. And yeah, I can't quite build Mino Castle anymore, or anything like it. Yeah, if I were building Mino, the silver would be up here. So this is well spotted. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I would like to go full speed ahead on my attack, but I just created this massive weakness. And yeah, I try to defend, but I, they can lure my generals forward. I'm not saying I have to do both of these captures, but if I do, there's some chances here. Not a lot, but it's more than nothing. So... Um... Yeah, maybe there are better ways for me to defend against this somehow. Maybe this uh, of wall, literally, because how do they attack the wall? Um, that's how they attack the wall uh, with gain of tempo. Hmm, that's not great. Do they have that in the actual game too? They took my lance. I was concerned about the lance, but. Yeah, no, my, uh, well, I mean, this, I say with gain of tempo, this gold is not completely hanging, but, um, my knight would rather be posted here than up there. My knight can't go further forward from here and is prone to a pawn drop, so, yeah, there are ways they could attack with gain of tempo here, but that didn't transpire. Then they played this uh, move, which inspired my knight move. Should it have? I'm not sure. Um, can I just do this here? Maybe. I don't know. Um, so if we check, and if we check, note if they go back here, I take there and then I can drop a general mate. Or I could even drop a general and then uh, take here with mate. So rook takes would have been sufficient here. Um, wait, rook takes after what sequence? Oh, I've already sacked the rook. Hang on. Yes, I'm commenting about this taking the knight because I'm convinced, maybe incorrectly so, that this mates. Wait, why am I dropping a knight? I don't need to drop a knight. Um, so after this, if the king comes up, it's mate in one. He goes back. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not clear to me what's going on. Um, I mean, I am attacking. We know that much. Um, I just don't know if I have mate, necessarily. This is defending here, so they can't take that, because I have a gold to 
drop, so the sacrifice would inspire this king move. How many king moves can I force here? Yeah, and then they go up, and this is checkmate. Okay, so, yeah. I thought, I wasn't completely sure during the game, but now I believe that if they take my dragon, I checkmate them with my knight. So that's why I started with this. Because I thought this would be the line that offers the most resistance, but there's not a lot of resistance to be offered, unfortunately. It's just... Oh yeah, also this would be check here, so... Yeah, this mates. So I didn't need to play what I did. I brought my knight up, and then used the other knight, and then did the sacrifice. And theoretically, in some positions, maybe in a different game, this could have allowed the king some elaborate escape sequence, you know, but it's not happening here. Uh, my attack is much too fast, etc. So all that put together means that this... Oh, actually, there's one other maxim to consider, which is drop the lance as far back as possible. Here it looks scary because there's gold takes lance, or bishop takes lance, but like this pin, this, like my opponent was aware of this idea. It's just hard to find things in time pressure. Uh, but yeah, we checkmate. Um, so that was exciting. What do we learn from this? Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to be willing to give um, in order to get what you want. So what I wanted was to play something different. And while I seem to have this extreme aversion to playing Static Rook, here it seemed to suit me well. I hope we enjoyed this game, and uh, thanks for watching.